Global CXO. I'm excited to be here today with Anant Subramanya, and he is the Executive Vice President of HCL Tech. How are you doing today? Brilliant, Amanda. How are you? Doing well. Can you talk about HCL Tech and what are the services that you provide? Sorry. So HCL Tech is a IT services firm, so which means we help our enterprise customers implement software technology and IT technology uh, within their firms. So HCL Tech is a $13 billion organization. So we typically provide services under digital, which is effectively helping the enterprises transform. Cloud, obviously, because it's a delivery vehicle of digital services. Engineering, which is helping our customers with OEMs like you know, Cisco's of the world or Microsoft's of the world develop software for their customers. And we do have our own software business where we develop software that people are able to purchase, right? especially in the field of commerce, marketing, and some mainframe workload modernization. Okay, thank you. And so we're going to talk about data-driven transformation today. And mm -hmm. how does HCL Tech utilize data-driven transformation to enhance customer experiences? Right. So HCL Tech, like I said, you know, uh, one important service we do provide is digital transformation. And as part of that, you know, as you think of enterprises today, customer experience is a key area of focus because loyalty is shifting from products to experiences, right? As people expect better experience as we go. And data is a core platform or a core um, aspect of providing that experience primarily because data provides scale, provides context. And therefore, the experiences can be made a lot more personalized, which I think is the goal of doing digital transformation. So that data plays a key part in ensuring that our customer experience is personalized to the users. And that's an important aspect of developing that capability. So are we, um, when we talk about data, are we talking about real-time data insights? Because I know most companies are trying to get that real-time data so they can act efficiently. Yeah, it is also real-time data, uh, right? So it's about customer preferences. So some of that is curated data, right? So you have first-party data, which is about the customer that's perhaps real-time. What are you doing with a brand like me? So that's first you know, real-time data. And also third-party data, perhaps, you know, how has somebody else experienced this? Is there elements that are happening elsewhere that's relevant? So when we speak to our customers, we talk about both what we call light data and dark data. Right? So effectively, we call light data everything you utilize to create an experience. And dark data is all the information that's available, but you're not making good use of it, which could be extremely relevant in creating a customer experience. So if you think about it, you know, you might be on a bank's website trying to do something. You failed at it and you call the contact center. They know that you went on the website trying to do something, but most people don't, you know, utilize it and you are led it. You lead directly to an idea that says press one for this, press 82 for something, press something else. That's a great example of how real time data in the, can be leveraged to ensure that the experience can be tailored to who's interacting with the enterprise. And how important is it for businesses to harness this data as far as the customer experience goes and even for the employee um, experience as well? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's extremely important because that data provides context. Right? With that context, of course, you can serve customers significantly better. But if you have context, you're actually doing something that's relevant rather than asking a lot of questions to derive context because you already have that. And as companies think of optimization, what can it do to employees? How can they serve customers better? That context, again, provides employees better access to what they can serve you with before asking you a lot of questions and exploring that context. So I think in general, it saves a lot of frustration. A bit more importantly, that, like I mentioned earlier, the most important aspect is providing context, and the context will ensure that both the person interacting with an enterprise is served well, and the employees are more efficient, which eventually means you don't have to spend as much money serving the customers. And the additional customer experience improvement only means they'll stay with you longer, which I think is a benefit. So from your experience, what are some roadblocks that companies face when trying to digitally transform their strategies? And can you share some solutions as well? Yeah, like I said, um, one aspect is access to information. So most companies do a decent job having access to information, but the problem is ownership, right? So, you know, it's not available for people to leverage. If it's not available for people to leverage, it becomes, like I mentioned, dark data. The information is available 
but unfortunately, I don't get my hands on it and therefore I can't leverage it fairly well. The second aspect that becomes important is the data to be used in context to the point I made earlier requires access through some mechanism. So if you have created, that's where concepts of a data mesh and what people call data products become important. So information, if it was available readily through APIs for you to access, then you'll use it to build a better experience. But that access perhaps is the number one roadblock that occurs because you know there isn't a mechanism for people to make this information available. Mostly data is, uh, I want to say, um, guarded safely as opposed to governed in a more federated manner. So if that happens better in an enterprise, I think then people will build amazing customer experiences with data. So there are a lot of emerging new technologies and I know companies are really trying to see how they can harness AI, especially. Where does AI fit into all this? Can you give some use case scenarios where it might be a good fit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we all do e-commerce today. That's the most common, well-understood examples for everybody that's perhaps going to listen to this podcast. So if you think about e-commerce, what happens is, you know, you need to figure out, you need to give a commitment on date. Right. So when will you get this item shipped to you at some point in time? Now imagine this isn't domestic, it's international, so which means there's customs involved, custom duties, etc. Okay. So we are working with customers today just to leverage data based on historic insights of how to ship to a country, current custom rules within a country, and third-party data such as weather, flight schedules, etc., to give you commitment that's offered as a service. Now that's a brilliant I you know opportunity for somebody to use AI to say what's the committed date. Because you might say something like, I want to, you know. Uh, ship something to a country. So we are using AI to say what are all the predictions possible and can we give a committed date? And that's you know something people will leverage. The second aspect, clearly, you know, AI is being used in contact centers today. You know, if you call any line, perhaps you know, a bank or a retailer of your choice, um, AI is being used to understand your voice and then direct you to the best possible solution. Um, you know, Google's doing a lot of work around it partner of ours. So those are examples of how information is used in a more intelligent fashion to make sure that the experience is more contextualized to what you're doing currently. Wonderful. So how does data-driven transformation contribute to improving customer loyalty and retention? Yeah. So um, that's a good point. What we touched upon earlier, Amanda, if you remember, we said that today loyalty is not to products. Right. But loyalty is to experience because if something's frustrating, people will just leave and go elsewhere because innovation is happening at a fast pace. You know, you don't have captive audience. So experience become a experience becomes a driver for loyalty over just products people had in the past. And I think, you know, if you are able to create data driven decisions, then the loyalty tends to be better with you. I'll take an example in our daily lives. You know, you know, I'm, I live in New Jersey, you live in New York, and then we had this big storm coming in last week and then flights were canceled all around the place. So if you are calling an airline, for example, and then, you know, the lines are long, you're waiting for something, people can anticipate that you're going to call them because there's a weather event. They know clearly that your flight's going to cancel. So there's already another flight scheduled. If people were able to bring all of this data together, then your phone call would simply go in a manner that says you're calling because your flight is delayed. I think you're rebooked on this. Can I help you with anything else? And you wouldn't actually want to talk to an agent. You just hang up. So imagine how much more efficiently people would be able to serve people really in distress. And you will walk away from it thinking this was a brilliant experience. So the next time I want to fly, I want to fly with this airline. So that's an example of how having data in context and then providing the right insight and providing a response using some AI capability will ensure that you're served. And then because you have that good experience, you have the odds that you'll perhaps work with this specific brand in the future. So that's a good example of how we're leveraging you know, data to ensure that experiences are better so that it drives, you know, higher customer loyalty, right? The ease of use today drives higher customer loyalty as we see it. So once these businesses have started implementing these digital transformation initiatives, how do you recommend that they measure the success? Yeah, I think um, it depends on where they're leveraging these, um, you know, data-driven CX improvements within the enterprise. Like obviously, you know, MPS is a good mechanism to see if people are talking about you in the right, you know, um, in the right light, they feel that, you know, you're the right brand to work with. That's one measure broadly of how, you know, your perception is changing in the market. But there are other micro aspects that we can think of. For example, 
<coughs> each customer journey, we associate a value with it and see how much of the journey is being leveraged well. For example, if the purpose of the customer journey was to serve you well with self-service, in that example, we spoke about the airline, it's called as average handling time. We can look at what's the average handling time. Um, was it resolved automatically by some level of you know data-driven you know uh, response that I could have provided to you? So we'll see how much of that translates to a contact center. That's called a you know um, transfer, right? So we want to reduce the number of transfers. So there are micro metrics we can look for. Similarly, within the marketing side, we look at you know how many effective campaigns we're able to run automatically, right? So does it translate into a purchase? But whereas if you look at a customer journey, for example, with a financial services firm, we want to move from products, which is buy this credit card, to a member experience. So which what does Amanda need now? So for example, you know, we have you know some people who register that they had a child because they have a family. At 16, you will buy a car. But the bank never comes back to you and say, here's a mechanism for you to buy a car that's safe for your child. And here's an insurance that will be low cost. You have that information, but marketing happens by products and not by life events of people. So these are examples of how to measure efficiency of doing these you know, data-driven CX initiatives. Wonderful. So we've talked a lot about digital transformation initiatives and data-driven strategies. What are some key last thoughts that you would like to leave us with today? So um, what, I leave, uh, what I want to leave you with is, you know, people understand that um, experience, people need to realize that experience is the new metric for loyalty, right? So um, having a good experience will create the loyalty. And to create that experience, you need to have context and the context comes from data. Okay. And eventually, if, as an enterprise, you want to experiment and continuously improve that context for the users you need scale. And that scale comes from access to information. So therefore, you need to make data accessible. So if you're able to do these three things well, I think enterprises will be able to create compelling experiences that create long-term loyalty and continue to create the culture of continuous improvement, which is perhaps most important in improving the experience for users. Wonderful. Thank you for coming on our show today and sharing your insights with us. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Amanda.